There is one type of engine Russia desperately needs, yet in reality does not truly possess. As domestic air travel demand surges, Russia is being forced to rebuild its wide-body aircraft ambitions from the ground up. But just a few years ago, everything nearly collapsed. Moscow was cut off from Rolls-Royce GE and Safran. Ambitious programs were frozen international partnerships unraveled, and the dream of a truly all-Russian wide-body aircraft seemed beyond rescue. Then came the PD-35. On paper, it promises power independence and technological sovereignty. So what exactly is the PD-35? Why does Moscow need it so badly? Let's take a closer look. Wide-body aircraft capable of transcontinental flights with hundreds of passengers are fundamentally defined by their engines, massive power plants that must deliver tens of thousands of pounds of thrust while maintaining fuel efficiency and durability over thousands of hours. The PD-35 is envisioned as Russia's first modern high-thrust turbofan engine designed to compete in the same class as the GE9X or Rolls-Royce Trent XWB. Its target thrust range is around 35 to 38,000 pounds, making it suitable for wide-body passenger aircraft and large cargo platforms. More significantly in theory, PD-35 represents a complete break from foreign dependency. For Moscow, this is not merely an engineering endeavor, it is an existential imperative. Following the imposition of stringent Western sanctions after the 2022 invasion of Ukraine, Russia lost access to engines from giants like General Electric Rolls-Royce and Pratt & Whitney, which had previously powered much of its fleet. International collaborations such as the Sino-Russian CR929 widebody project have faltered, leaving domestic programs without viable propulsion options. Without a homegrown high-thrust engine like the PD-35 aircraft initiatives from revamped IL-96 liners to potential new wide bodies would grind to a halt, rendering them little more than grounded prototypes. The stakes are amplified by the aging Soviet-era fleet with models like the AN-124 and IL-96 facing obsolescence without modern replacements. In essence, this engine transcends technical achievement. It is the safeguard against a collapse in Moscow's long-haul aviation capabilities, both commercial and strategic. But even more importantly, this is not meant to be just one engine. It is designed as the foundation of an entire engine family, a scalable core that could eventually power multiple aircraft types from long-haul passenger jets to heavy freighters and even military transport platforms. It can be said that the PD-35 is envisioned as a foundational platform underpinning a broad spectrum of Russia's aviation ecosystem. In the civil sector, it is slated to power ambitious wide-body projects including a prospective domestic long-haul airliner and derivatives of the MC-21 medium-haul jet, such as stretched variants like the MC-21-500 or 600. Militarily, it could revitalize heavy transport aircraft, potentially upgrading the AN-124 Ruslan or enabling new platforms with payloads exceeding 100 metric tons. The engine's modular design also facilitates variants like the PD-26, a downscaled 26-ton thrust version for medium to large transports, illustrating its role as a technological bedrock for an entire family of power plants. This versatility extends to Russia's high-thrust engine landscape, where the PD-35's innovations in materials and systems could influence future developments across civil military and even export-oriented programs. Should this engine falter, the ripple effects would be profound. Stalled wide-body dreams, compromised military logistics, and a weakened domestic industry unable to compete in a market where high-thrust engines drive nearly half the global aviation value. Thus, its success is pivotal not just for one plane, but for resurrecting this country's position in advanced aerospace manufacturing. So what has all this effort actually delivered? By the way, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We know you're going to love what's coming next. In theory, the PD-35 is defined by impressive ambitions. The engine is designed to generate around 35 tons of thrust, approximately 77,000 pounds force with growth potential to as much as 50 tons, placing it squarely in competition with Western heavyweights such as the GE9X used on the 777X and the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB powering the Airbus A350. A massive 3.1 meter fan diameter composite fan blades that reduce weight by more than 600 kilograms and a high pressure turbine operating at gas temperatures approaching 2000 Kelvin all point to a design optimized for high efficiency and extreme power. In reality, however, the picture looks very different. As of late 2025, the engine remains firmly in the technology demonstrator phase. Bench testing of the gas generator was completed in 2022, and full-scale evaluations were concluded in 2024 at the OS-5 test facility in Perm. Yet no flight testing has taken place, certification remains a distant prospect, 
and a reliable supply chain capable of supporting cereal production has yet to be proven. More troubling still recent reports suggest that Russia may even pause development of the PD-35 in order to prioritize the PD-26, a less ambitious project that better reflects current resource constraints. This shift underscores a deeper issue, the absence of a dedicated wide-body aircraft program that could justify the immense financial and industrial investment required to bring the engine to maturity. Despite these realities, President Vladimir Putin has publicly expressed optimism predicting that serial production could be achieved within 12 to 18 months. Yet such timelines stand in stark contrast to the broader pattern of delays seen across Russia's engine programs, including the PD-14 and PD-8. Taken together, these inconsistencies highlight the gap between political messaging and industrial execution. However, building the PD-35 is not merely difficult, it is one of the most difficult engineering tasks on Earth. Designing a high-thrust turbofan requires a convergence of technologies that few nations truly master. First, high-temperature turbine materials must endure gases at 2,000 Kelvin 100 degrees hotter than the PD-14, necessitating advanced alloys, ceramic coatings, and intricate cooling channels that mix air with fuel or water to form protective films. Second, manufacturing large composite fan blades demands precision in carbon fiber production and additive techniques areas where Russia lacks the global supply networks that Western firms like GE have leveraged for decades of refinement. Third, the full authority. Digital engine control system requires sophisticated electronics for real-time optimization, a domain hampered by sanctions on imported components. Above all, it requires decades of accumulated testing, data data that cannot be rushed, improvised, or replaced by theory alone. In contrast, Western engines benefit from iterative improvements and international collaborations, allowing for proven reliability and efficiency. However, Western engine manufacturers did not arrive at this level overnight. Companies like GE, Rolls-Royce, and Safran built their expertise through generations of failed engines, incremental improvements, and enormous financial losses. Each successful power plant is the result of lessons learned from earlier compromises and mistakes. The PD-35's development in seclusion amplifies these issues with bench tests, validating concepts, but exposing gaps in endurance and scalability. Experts compare its complexity to rocket engineering, emphasizing the need for extreme tolerances that Russia's current infrastructure struggles to meet under pressure. These hurdles underscore a broader technology wall, where ambition collides with the harsh demands of autonomous innovation. Moreover, time has proven a relentless adversary in Russian engine programs, and the engine is no exception. Its predecessor, the PD-14 for the MC-21, required over 15 years from inception to operational maturity, navigating funding shortages, technical setbacks, and certification hurdles. The PD-35, with its larger scale, heightened complexity, and unforgiving requirements for high thrust performance, faces an even steeper climb. Initiated in 2016, it has progressed to demonstrator testing, but full development could stretch into the 2030s, especially if paused for the PD-26. Meanwhile, Russia's fleet is deteriorating rapidly, with projections indicating a drop from 738 foreign aircraft in 2022 to just 316 by 2030, creating urgent demand for replacements. So will the PD-35 materialize before aviation technology advances further? perhaps with electric or hydrogen propulsion, or before market needs shift irretrievably. Sanctions exacerbate delays by forcing russification of components, as seen in the MC-21's weight increases and range reductions from domestic substitutions. In this race against obsolescence, time erodes not just schedules, but the very relevance of the project. Next geopolitical isolation has fundamentally altered the PD-35's trajectory, stripping away the collaborative ecosystem that underpins modern aviation. Without easy paths to international certification from bodies like the FAA or EASA, the engine's global acceptance is curtailed, limiting export potential to friendly nations at best. That also sharply reduces the available market, the diversity of operating feedback, and the incentives for rapid iteration and improvement. The dissolution of partnerships such as the CR929 with China means Russia must shoulder development alone, devoid of shared expertise or funding. External validation through joint testing or supplier networks is absent forcing reliance on domestic benchmarks that may not match rigorous international standards. Besides, jet engines evolve through pressure. Airlines demand better fuel efficiency, higher reliability, and lower maintenance costs, forcing manufacturers to refine their designs continuously. Without that external pressure and global scale, innovation slows even when the underlying technology exists. This structural disadvantage is not theoretical. It is a constraint 
that has shaped every successful engine program in history. This new reality demands that the engine prove its mettle in a vacuum where sanctions block access to critical technologies and inflate costs as evidenced by the PD-14's price doubling compared to imports. Broader industry woes, including slashed production targets for related engines and fleet shortages, compound the isolation turning what could have been a collaborative triumph into a solitary struggle for survival. Despite all of these challenges, this engine still carries immense strategic significance. This engine is not only about commercial aviation, it is about national logistics independence, military airlift capability, the survival of the domestic aerospace industry, and technological signaling on the global stage. Even a PD-35 that falls short of Western benchmarks could allow Russia to sustain internal wide-body operations, something that might otherwise become impossible within the next decade. In that sense, it does not need to outperform GE or Rolls-Royce to matter. It simply needs to exist and to work. But things are getting worse. Time is the enemy. Russia's current wide-body fleet is aging. Maintenance becomes harder without spare parts. Efficiency gaps widen. Operating costs rise. If the engine arrives too late or underperforms significantly, Russia could face a prolonged capability gap where wide-body operations become economically unsustainable. That would reshape domestic aviation cargo logistics and international connectivity in profound ways. The honest answer is nuanced. Assessing the PD-35's prospects requires a balanced lens weighing tangible strengths against formidable weaknesses. Technically, yes, Moscow has the scientific foundation to build such an engine. Industrially, the challenge is enormous but not impossible. Economically and operationally, this is where uncertainty dominates. Moreover, on the positive side, it enjoys robust political backing with President Putin championing accelerated production and highlighting it as a post-Soviet milestone. Besides guaranteed domestic demand from airlines facing fleet crises to military needs, provides a captive market insulating it somewhat from commercial volatility. Technological strides, such as successful demonstrator tests, affirm Russia's engineering heritage. Yet these are overshadowed by deep-seated flaws, persistent technology gaps in materials and controls, acute time pressures, amid delays, and a narrow customer base confined by sanctions. The potential pivot to the PD-26 signals pragmatism, but also underscores the PD-35's vulnerabilities, including financial strains and the lack of a synced aircraft program. PD-35 does not need to become the world's best engine but it must become good enough, reliable enough, and producible enough under conditions no Western manufacturer has ever faced in modern times. That alone makes the engine one of the most fascinating aviation programs of the decade. This engine represents more than thrust and fan diameter. It is a test of whether a modern aerospace ecosystem can survive and innovate in isolation. Whether it succeeds or struggles, one thing is already clear. The future of Russian wide-body aviation will be shaped not by aircraft designs or airline strategies, but by the outcome of this single engine. And that makes it one of the most consequential aviation projects flying under the radar today. So what do you think? Can Russia bridge its isolation-induced deficits? Will political will translate to technical triumphs? Thank you for joining us today, and we wish you safe and enjoyable flights.